been at the Coddy of Dan Rosen for two years now. He's only 19, but has the experience of a seasoned performer. He's appeared at Baltimore at City Lights down at Harbor Place, the Charm City Comedy Club, and has even played the Catch a Rising Star Club up in Dick's hometown of New York. So look for him this summer on the home box office, a comedy special, but let's look for him now as we welcome the fabulous Dan Rosen to the People Are Talking Comedy Club. Hey. Thank you. Good morning. It's good to be back in Baltimore. I was in uh, Boston last week visiting my uh, parents. And they're not here tonight, so we can be pretty honest. I think uh, I've hated them all my life. <laughs> They've hated me. It's been a mutual thing. When I was growing up, they used to do little things. They used to make home movies. They would hire an actor to play my part. <laughs> it was a terrible thing. My mother would ask all these stupid questions when you're growing up. Like, I was out on that date the other night. My mother's like, so Dan, where are you going? My mother talks just like me. It's tremendous. <laughs> So, Dan, where are you going? Out on a date, Ma, no big deal. I don't think you know her. Every mother asks this next question. Dan, is she a nice girl? Is she a nice girl? I like to shock your mother just once. <laughs> Dan, is she a nice girl? No, Ma, she's a total slut, okay? <laughs> 35 years old, she's in the PLO, Ma. <laughs> Two or three kids, Ma, I'm bringing her home for Yum Kipper. All right, Ma? <laughs> Give Mama Valley and put her to sleep. That's where I come from. <laughs> I, was, I was there, I had uh, my birthday last week. I turned 19, thank you. And, uh... <laughs> I was in Boston, and my father's been doing this for 19 straight years, putting the candles on the cake that never blow out. That's a lot of fun, huh? I'm hyperventilating, Dad's on the floor. So I played a little proud joke on Dad last week, uh, put some lighter fluid on his cake, so. You can write to him, he's at the Burn Unit Center in Houston. That's my school. No, and I got golf clubs for my uh, birthday, which is kind of neat, because I don't, I don't really play golf. The only sport I'm really good at is miniature golf, which is kind of sad, because what do you do if you're good at miniature golf? I mean, you can't, <laughs> I mean, you can't turn pro. <laughs> Can you imagine professional miniature golf tours, like on television? It'd be like, Nicholas teeing up at the 17th. He's got about a 25-foot right to left break going through the windmill. <laughs> Around the stage coats, it's on the green. He got it in. He got that in. Now we're walking to the 18th. Everything's looking good for Nick. Wait a minute, there's some kind of problem here. Oh no, the ref just made a call. It appears Nicholas hit in Tom Watson's red golf ball instead of his own green one. <laughs> That's an automatic one stroke penalty, and Nicholas and Palmer tied now going into the 18th. And there's some kind of holdup now on the 18th green. We can't. Oh no. The Hoffman family is still on that 18th green. <laughs> Apparently, Judy Hoffman dropped her scorecard in the pond. They're fishing it out. Okay, now we're ready. Nicholas and Palmer, giants in the field of miniature golf. They're both vying for their grand prize, $365,000, and a free game. <laughs> trying, to get, trying to get that ball directly into that clown's mouth, so let's uh, see how we're doing. Sports is good. Sports, because now I'm 19 in most states, I can, I can drink alcohol now. And my favorite drink cause, is Michelob Light, because Michelob Light, you can do any sport under any condition and drink Michelob Light. Now, if, if Michelob Light's that good, why not use in more delicate situations, these commercials? You know what I'm talking about. You're out with a good looking girl, pull over the side of the road, and you go, So, this is it, your place or mine. So, he turns around and gives you one of these. Dan, look, it's a platonic relationship. Talks just like my mother. Dan. <laughs> It's a platonic relationship, we're just good friends, I'm a virgin, that's just the way I was brought up, I'm sorry. You look at Sue and you go, but Sue, for a Michelob Light. <laughs> Sue turns around and goes, sure. <laughs> Six back all your friends, that's the way it works. Thank you very much, hey, there'll be more company when people are talking, coming up. <laughs> well, Dick, what do you think? What, you, what, you laughed? He was terrific. I really thought he was terrific. Great. We'll do lunch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what no, I'll you... sign now, Dick. I'll sign now. Please. N not that funny. <laughs> what, what, what made you decide to try this for a living? For a living? Yeah. Uh, probably um, about next year. <laughs> <laughs> when I start doing comedy, you mean? Yeah. Um, well, all, all through elementary school and... Uh, High school and stuff, I always did comedy, and then I started uh, 
just sat up on a dare, went to an open mic night at uh, City Lights down at Harvard Place and just went from there. Dick was telling us about the time that he was a, a comedian for about three minutes and uh, and he stood up there and there was a long, long pause. Tell us about the first time you failed. There had to be a time when it didn't work. Yeah, I was, uh, it's about 15 years ago, I was in New York working with this tall, skinny guy. <laughs> Did a quick 20. You know, I never saw him again. I heard he's, he's in LA somewhere. I don't know. Do you think you're funny? Do I think I'm funny? That's, uh... Because you have no reason to do it. <laughs> There's going to be a fight. Um, no, well, yeah. I guess when you, when, if people laugh, what, what Dick said. If people laugh, I guess, I guess you can be funny. How far do you want to go with your comedy? I mean, do you want to be a superstar if you can be? Or is it something that you, you just sort of like to make well, a little... I, I like to do, uh, well, I'm just doing this to, uh, say I work at the Pikes Movie Theater. In Pikes one, I want to, you know, do, uh, do comedy so I can make it there full-time as a concession boy. <laughs> Yeah. No, I want to, um... You're always trying to be on and funny, right? That's what you're trying to do. No, Rich. What I want to do is, um... <laughs> I, wa I want to I wanna direct... Uh, basically, I want to I wanna direct movies. I want to write movies and be in movies, stuff like right, that. Write for, like, comedy shows and stuff I like that. Would you want to do that? Not necessarily comedy. Just, you know, just everything. What, Dick? No, I was just, uh... <laughs> you're, you're, I think he's so putting us on. I think he's putting us on. What do you really want to do? What I really want to do, I want to be a power forward for the Boston Celtics. That's what I really want. <laughs> you got it out of me, Dick. You got it out of me. You put a gun to my head. Are you always on? Are you always on? No, I'm not. No. Were you the kid throwing spitballs in class when you were in third grade? No, I was the kid paying people to pay spitballs. <laughs> uh, no, I never, I never, I was never really the class. In fact, I wasn't even voted the, the class clown in my high school. It was the... We can understand that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're really getting on my nerves. You know, <laughs> Is over, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I was no, never the class clown. Yeah, I was never the uh, never the class clown. I wasn't voted the class clown or anything like that. So, how do your parents do? Your parents take your joking about you hating? They them? don't. Seriously? Well, there was a not really. It's an old joke to me, I guess. My parents really uh, they don't understand any of my material or whatever. In fact, the whole thing was that I'd uh, try out my jokes in front of my father, and if uh, he didn't like them, I know they were good. <laughs> but, you know, he is just no. No sense He's of not humor. Okay. <laughs> no concept. No concept. We've got somebody at the mic that has a comment or question. Hello. Hi. 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 I want to ask Dan if I could have a kiss. Babe. Dan Rosen? <laughs> Babe. Well, after the show. <laughs> now, Dan. Now? Go ahead. Dan. Can you come get it? <laughs> Now we really hate his guts, don't we? <laughs> that's like your sister. That's my sister. <laughs> that's um, that's a girl that I talk about the sleeves. Remember? When you, now look, when you are watching a young guy like like him, what really seriously goes through your mind in terms of of his potential? Does he have potential in your opinion? Absolutely, absolutely. He's a very funny guy. I think uh, if I can be real honest, I think there's certain seasoning that you need as far as timing. But yes, there's no question that you have potential, and I think you can uh, you can move on to bigger and better things right. if you don't steal anybody's material, which, All right. which you did with Richard Belzer. Babe, babe. No, that's Richard Belzer stole that. Uh... He stole that from Harry Ritz. Yeah, then Harry Ritz stole it from me. That's me. <laughs> no, no, that's well, that's typical L.A. Is it? Yeah, babe. Babe. Sweetheart. Showbiz. Let's right. see who's on the line. Hello, you're on Channel 13. People are talking.